Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. We got some great big news happening here. We're doing our second annual projector shootout and we'll be doing ultra short throw the first day, which is coming up on Saturday, December 10th. And we're doing it in the same New York City location. It's, the building is called The Company. It's a very luxury, beautiful building. And we rented the entire seventh floor with an outdoor balcony. It's just beautiful there. So the first day for the ultra short throw, we're gonna have five ultra short throw projectors competing to be crowned the king of ultra short throw TV. We have AWOLs, they're, um, they're 3500, their flagship piece. We have Hisense, the PX1 Pro. We have Epson's LS800B, which is the only LCD in the event. The others are all DLP. We have LG's flagship HU915 QB in black. And we have Samsung's uh, LSP9T. So those will be the five ultra short throw projectors competing in the event. And the ballot will be set up so that you can tell me that you want a certain price category or you want to uh, have certain peak lumens or you want the capability to do a certain screen size and you use the ballot for what your use case is and you can select from the best products that match your, your needs. The next day, Sunday, December 11th, we're gonna be doing our long throw projector shootout and we've broken into price categories. For the ultra short throw the first day, we're just doing the flagship models. We're not doing mid or low end ones. They're all triple laser. So the first, day, the first price category is $4,000 to $7,000 long throw projectors. And in that category, we have Epson's LS12000. We have JVC DLA NP5. We have LG's AU810PB. And we have Sony's 5000ES. Uh, they're all laser projectors with the exception of JVC which is still a bulb projector. After we announce the results of the first $4,000 to $7,000 category, we're gonna move into the $11,000 to $16,000 price category. And those will include JVC's uh, NZ7, but up against JVC's NZ8. So we're gonna show you all the differences between an NZ7 and an NZ8. And then we're gonna have Sony's XW6000ES competing against each other. We're gonna show you all the elements of picture quality and all the differences. The third category is 25,000 to 35,000, and that we're gonna pit JVC's NZ9 flagship against Sony's flagship XW7000ES. And um, I think that's one of the most popular questions I get every day, is what is the difference and what do I think? And this will be the definitive answer of those questions. What is the differences in minimum and peak lumens? What is the difference in HDR perception? What is the difference in color fidelity and color saturation? Motion resolution. So those, all those answers in all these categories will be answered in great detail. You can ask questions, they'll be moderated and questions will be answered. Shane will decide which questions will be asked to the panel of experts and to our presenters. Uh, we have Phil Jones, uh, who will be our MC, and we have Jason Dustel, who is gonna run the operations and has brought all of Meridio and AV Pro's 4K HDR switching equipment. Uh, Metra is doing the uh, 8K cables, the 48 gigabits cables. So we've done this all right. We have Seymour uh, screen, with their Radiance white screens. These are reference screens. So they'll all be calibrated. All the projectors will be calibrated. We'll spend a few minutes looking at them, how they come out of their box in the best picture mode, but we'll be spending most of our time how they look post calibration. Uh, we're gonna be giving you calibration tips on how you can make your home projection system perform better without bringing in a professional calibrator. It's not gonna be as good as hiring a professional calibrator, but it'll be better than viewing the, the projectors as they come out of the box. So this is a very important event for all people interested in ultra short throw and long throw in any price category to match your use case. So please tune in.
to watch the event and ask questions as it moves along. When the events are finished, Shane will do a consolidated edited one that will be easier to view. And uh, we look forward to seeing you all this weekend. Thank you for tuning in. What's up guys? Today we're going to do a quick little comparison between the JVC NZ8 and the Sony 7000 ES 4K projectors. So this is going to be a little follow-up to the comparison that I did against the 7000 ES against the NZ7, which people didn't think was fair since the price difference between the two was such was so big. But this is a little bit closer. I would do the NZ9, but I don't have the NZ9. So obviously it's not an apples to apple comparison since the JVC again is a little bit cheaper than the 7000 ES. But I think this is going to be a bit fairer than the 7 though, the NZ7 versus 7000. So right now this is the opening scene to The Secrets of Dumbledore. It's a fairly dark-ish movie. This particular opening scene here starts with a WB logo, which is a very dark logo with some splashes of color on either side of the logo with varying shades of color within these color bursts. Let's quickly look at the settings that I have going on in the JVC right now though. So these are the default settings that I'm using right now. Under the JVC, we got Frame Adapt HDR is on. I've got the BT2020 color filter turned on as well, which was missing from the NZ7. So the NZ7 does not have the color filter. The color temp is on HDR10, frame by frame HDR, dynamic processing. I've got the theater optimizer turned on, HDR level is on auto, although you can manipulate that if you want. So this would be on max HDR level. That's two, one, zero. We got negative one, negative two, and then this is on auto. And so you know that I do have the AKE shift turned off for this comparison because the Sony does not have AK upscaling. Let's jump into more settings and you can see from my space, I feel that the middle laser power looks the best on my screen. If I had a bigger screen, maybe I'd go with high, but for my size screen, which is a 120 inch cinema scope screen, it is, it works best on the middle section and dynamic controls on mode one. Aperture is fully wide open. And then these are all at their default settings. This of course is not a professionally calibrated shootout amongst both projectors, although we will be having a shootout come December 10th, which is this Saturday with the JVC models against the Sony models. So keep an eye out for that. If you're watching this after the 10th of December, then I'll leave a link to the video down below in the video's description for that shootout where the projectors will be calibrated and it'll be more scientific than this video here. All right. So now let's jump into the Sony settings under the Sony settings. I've got this on reference reality creation turned off. And by popular demand from the last video I did, I've got the dynamic control turned off. My output is at 50, which will match the JVC's middle. Dynamic HDR enhancer turned on high. Motion flows off, HDR contrast slider is turned on, turned to 85. And then these are by their default settings at 50. Sharpness is at 50. Expert settings, I've got smooth gradation turned off, color correction off, live color off, HDR is on auto. Now what we're seeing here is the JVC. I have turned on my lights so you can see how the image is projected on my 239 to 1 screen. There are black borders around the entire circumference of the screen. And if I go ahead and turn the lights off, you can see that the letterbox bars totally disappear. It's almost like looking at an OLED TV. Now when we switch over to the Sony, you can see that the letterbox bars actually stand out from the rest of the screen. So the black borders or the letterbox bars are more grayish than they are black. And if you remember the settings, the HDR slider is on 85. I got the dynamic HDR enhancer turn on high, which is recommended, which I got blasted for in the comments section because I had that turned off. And the laser output is at 50%. If I was to turn up the laser a little bit higher then the, then the overall picture brightness would raise and those letterbox bars would be even more grayer than they are now. One thing that I did notice between these two projectors is the smooth gradation around the highlighted areas here. So there are some varying different shades of blacks and blues and also on the right side of the screen where it's white, there's a little bit of pink in there, red, maybe some teal and greens. You can see how the color transitions on the JVC are nice and smooth. Whereas on the Sony, you can see the color transitions and steps. 
So as far as smooth gradation is concerned, the gradations are smoother with the JVC than on the Sony. Of course, you can always turn the smooth gradation on the Sony, but it doesn't really help out that much. And if you do turn on the smooth gradation, you will start losing some fine detail. Here's another scene that shows off how well the JVC can handle color gradations. This is off the Spears and Munsell disc. If you take a look at the skyline, you can see the varying shades of purple where it goes from a really dark to the upper left corner to the opposite end of the screen on the right hand side where the purples get a lot lighter. So here on the JVC, it's a very nice, smooth transitional gradation. On the Sony, you can see the varying different steps of color gradations going from dark all the way to light. So the next scene we're going to take a look at is the famous horse scene from the Spears and Munsell disc. You can see here that we are now looking at the JVC, the HDR tone mapping, or the HDR level. The HDR level is turned on auto, and if we hop on over to the Sony, you can see that the Sony is a little bit brighter and the whites are a bit cleaner and brighter as well. And if I wanted to match the Sony for HDR, I'd have to turn the HDR tone mapping to zero rather than auto. Now you can see that these look nearly identical. So this is another one of those cases where the JVC's tone mapping can make the image a bit duller than what it would look like if you were to set the HDR tone mapping manually. So it doesn't always get it right all the time. And this is with the 4000 nit demo on the Spears and Munsell disc. On this next demo, we're going to take a look at some of the specular highlights here. So if we can see the outline of the sun over there on the right hand side, it's fairly bright. Also in the center section, you can see where the sun is peeking out from under the clouds where it's we can see the little bit of the blue and a little bit of the cloud where it's a bit brighter and whiter. We switch on over to the Sony, you can see that the Sony is clearly a lot brighter. Now even though I do have both of these projectors set on their halfway setting on the medium point, because the Sony is much brighter, the specular highlights pop a lot more. Now in order for me to bring that up, I would have to go back into the settings on the JVC and then turn on the brightness on high. So here you can see that the image does come a little bit closer to the Sony. But I'm going to have to give the Sony the win here just for sheer brightness. Now if we take a look on the bottom here on the right side of the screen where the rocks are, you can see how well that the JVC handles the black levels and all the shadow detail. So you can see that the rocks have a really good dimensional feel to them. If we jump on over to the Sony because it is so bright, the rock formations do look a little flatter and they really lack some of that added depth that you get from the JVC. Here's another example of black levels. You can see how dark the background is. Like I said, it's almost like looking at an OLED. And switching over to the Sony, you can see that the background looks a lot grayer than the JVC does. Now, I think if you didn't have both of these in person at the same time, you might think the Sony looks great. But once you do see a JVC next to it, then the black levels become pretty apparent. At the time of this video, the JVC NZ8 is selling for $16,000 and the Sony is selling for $28,000. Now, like I said, this isn't a full review on either of these projectors, just a quick little comparison. I do think for $10,000 cheaper than the Sony, I find that the black levels are better. I found that the color handling is better. And I find that the HDR handling is also better on the JVC as well. I will give the Sony the win for brightness, and I also find it to be slightly sharper than the JVC. But if you do want to take it up a notch with the JVC, you can always turn on the 8K upscaling. Now, like I said, this is just a quick little comparison, not a full review. But if you do want to check out the projector shootout, which is happening on December 10th, I will be streaming that shootout live on the channel. So if you have any questions at all, make sure you join the chat, watch the live stream, and drop any questions that you have there in that video coming up on December 10th. And if you do want to pick up any one of these projectors, you can pick them up at valueelectronics.com. Stop by the website or give them a call. Just let them know that we sent you. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you again in the next video.